Creating a more sustainable future, creating a more sustainable world, that is most likely the biggest challenge of the future. To get there, we need to transform our economy, we need to transform businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stefan Grafenhorst, and when I'm not in front of this camera, I'm actually supporting our divisions in becoming more sustainable. So, how to create a better future, how to build more sustainable businesses. This is what I want to discuss today with Axel Kühner. Welcome, Axel. Hi, Stefan. Thank you for having me. Axel, this is um, the first interview of a series of, in of interviews that I will do over the next coming weeks and months. I will have senior ex executives of our, of our group here and we'll talk about transformation, about change, about sustainability. And I'm very happy to have you here today. My pleasure. Now, we live in tough times. Um, what used to be normal 12 months ago is obviously no longer normal. You, can me, uh, you and me can actually sit here because we both tested negative. And the first thing is obviously um, we need to talk about Corona. And my first question would be, how do you personally cope with the pandemic? And then the second question is, of course, like, how do we do as a company? How do we cope with a year that has been very hard and looking into the future? The pandemic is obviously not over yet. Yeah, so actually it's, it, it's, it's quite in parallel. So my personal uh, experience and, and the company and as a CEO of this company, that's always closely linked. So if, if the company is doing, doing, doing great, so it's, it's easy to, to do great as, a, as an individual. But uh, if, if the company wouldn't, it would be difficult for me to, 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 feel, to feel good at the same time. So I, I cope with the situation. Uh, I think as we all need to do, I, I comply with the rules. I think we all went through phases of this pandemic. So in the beginning, we needed just to understand what's, what's, what's going on there. And I think that I spent quite a lot of time uh, trying to understand the rules of the pandemic and the virus itself. And uh, what I tried to do is I, I tried to stand at the forefront, of course, uh, for, for Griner and of course for my family as well. So, so what are the learnings? What are the two learnings that you take away from 2020? S things that we believe that are impossible, they are possible. I'll give you just an example. Uh, in, 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 back in January last year, we implemented a uh, remote working uh, rule for our employees uh, on, on headquarters. And we, we defined that they could stay at home, working from home, uh, to an extent of a maximum of 50%. And we thought, if, and that's difficult to cope with. Eight weeks later, we were at a level of 100%, and it worked well. So within two months, I had to learn that what I thought was impossible, it was easily possible. And, and I think that's the, the biggest learning. We need to be resilient. And we, we need to think the, the unthinkable. Good. I hope we keep that spirit. Um, the next 30 minutes, we obviously don't want to talk about Corona anymore. I mean, it's in the media and we've probably done that like for a year. We want to talk about change, about transformation, about the future, about a more sustainable future. Now, as a warm up, I would like to do something different because we all know you as our CEO. Yeah. You're with the company, I think, for, for 12 years now. Yes, almost. Yeah. But um, I want to get to know you as a person, at least for a moment here. So I brought a few sentences and I'd like you to finish or end them. Yeah. Question number one. If I had a chance to meet one famous person for dinner, that would be? It would be Barack Obama. Let me know when you have that dinner. I will join. Second question. When I was a child, age 12, I wanted to become? I wanted to become a doctor, actually, but, but uh, luckily I didn't because probably some people would have to die. So, so it's, it's better to become a CEO. That went obviously a little wrong, yeah, or like a little different. Question number three. The one thing I had to learn the hard way. Um, is that some things you better wait for uh, send, uh, b rather than trying to force it. So there, there were things that I wanted very much and I 
really tried everything and I couldn't wait for it and it would have been better to wait for it. So that's something that I have, I have learned. Sometimes you need patience. You want to give an example? Or? Yeah, yeah. For example, uh, we, we, did, we did an acquisition uh, and, and I was working very hard on it for, for, for more than 10 years. Huh? And, um, and trying very hard and doing everything um, sometimes really consumes a lot of energy and it's, it's easier just to wait and sit back and wait for, for a better opportunity. And so it's not always the best to, to always keep on pushing. Sometimes you need to, 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 to step back and, 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 and relax some time and trying to, to achieve the same goal in, with a different approach. I'm really bad at organizing myself. How come? You know, I, I, what I need is a, a, a framework of, of people supporting me that, that really do the things better that I'm not good at. Question number five. One thing I always wanted to do but never did. Uh, to, 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 to travel for, for more than four weeks, uh, to, to, to go on holiday. That's something I always wanted to do, but I, I never did. No time. You know, no time, that's always a matter of personal priority. Yeah. So saying it's, I, I didn't have the time, that would be quite easy. But frankly speaking, I just didn't, I didn't um, make myself um, the room. Uh, to, to do that. So that's, that's it's, 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 it's my fault, my personal. So if, if I would have uh, wanted to do it uh, very hard, so it's, I, I could have uh, created uh, the freedom to do so. So um, yeah, so saying there is no time, that would be too easy. Last question, and that's actually my favorite question, that is my favorite Greiner division is That's, that's, uh, that's unfair, huh? because uh, that, that would be exactly like asking uh, which of my two daughters I would be in favor of. And there would, the, the answer would be the same. There is no favorite. Great. Thank you, Axel. Um, the next 30 minutes, we want to talk about sustainability. And when I told my friends about this concept of having an interview with you to talk about sustainability, They said, well, this is going to be easy because you guys do plastics and that can never be sustainable. So what are you talking about? So now tell me, did I pick the wrong friends or is it actually true that plastics can never be sustainable? I would say probably both is wrong because I don't, I don't think that, but I cannot really judge, but I don't think that you just have chosen the wrong friends. But, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of perspective. And I completely understand that people have this perspective that sustainability uh, is a, is contradicts with plastics. I, I personally believe that is wrong. And I can tell you that once we have created our Plastics for Life vision, back in 2011 and 2012, I was, I was taking this idea with Uh, along with me on, on my business trips to our, to our entities uh, globally. And I was asking, what do you think about the idea? And what people said was, well, it, it sounds great, but you can't say that. And I was asking, why wouldn't I say that? Because plastics is bad. At least uh, the perception of it uh, is, is, a, is a negative one. For good reason. I for, mean, for a good the, reason, yeah, yeah. yeah. On, on, on a first glance only. Because this is only on, on the very surface, because we all have the idea and that is very much triggered by pictures that we have on the media. And um, so, but, so I, what, what I did, I was asking, is there a need why we would need to be, or what, why we should feel ashamed of what we're doing? And everyone was saying, no, there's not, but the perception is bad. And so I was, I was asking myself, Should we stop doing, uh, producing plastics or should we be more progressive in explaining uh, why plastics is good and what is the contribution? And this is why, when I decided that we would need to start um, asking ourselves, is that really the truth that, that plastics is positive and where is it and where, where not? And where not, 
this is where we, we need to refrain. So I, I, back to your question, you, you, I, but I don't think that you have the wrong friends, but it's, it's a question of creating awareness of all the things that are positive with plastics and those who are negative. And then we have to, to, uh, to reckon. So is, is, there, is, there, is the balance sheet, is it positive or negative? And I'm, I'm very sure that it's positive. But we have, of course, also to cope with the, with the negative impacts. We try to mitigate them. But that's exactly what would be my question. Like, don't you feel ashamed at times when you see plastics in the ocean? Of course, yeah. of course. And, and, and uh, we, we all have to, because we are a global company. We cannot be sure that there's a yogurt cup uh, swimming in, in, a, in a Pacific Ocean uh, and, and, and it might be from Griner. So, of course, we as, as a company, we didn't throw it there, but, but that, doesn't, that doesn't matter. So it, it's, one of, it's one of our cups maybe that uh, are a bottle. So, and so, of course, we have to feel ashamed. But I, I, I want to create the picture that it's, it's, it's more than that. So the question is, why, why, is it, why is it a yogurt cup? And the reason for that is easy. So our yogurt cup made of plastics, it protects the, the good, the, the content of this. And that's the most important thing. Because 10% of the carbon footprint of a, of a product is, 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 the, is the, the, the packaging and 90% is the product. So we need to, we need to, 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 to ensure that. And comparing uh, the yogurt cup made of plastics I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it's, and, 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 and scientific research shows that, it, it's, it's better than having aluminum or something different. And, and so, so that is the reason. So, so, so plastic is, is, is the best packaging. What, what can we do to make sure that it doesn't end up in, in, in our environment? And, and, and of course, that, that's something where we need to contribute. Yeah, so you're saying like plastic packaging helps like actually reducing emissions. You know, that's where the benefit is. Yes. Yeah. But at the same time, we see marine littering. And so there's obviously positive impacts and negatives. And isn't that like a, a weird trade-off to have a product that, okay, it does help, but then it also has this massive negative impact? Yes, it is. But, but what is important is that, that we, don't, we have to keep our eyes open and we have to accept that there's a negative impact. What we need to do is to minimize this impact and find solutions how we mitigate this. And we need to make sure that the balance of the positive and the negative always remains positive. If, if it wouldn't, then we need to, to change something in our setup. So we need to uh, extinguish those products from our product range. I think that are things we, we need to accept. So, and that is something which we need to push uh, and we, we need to boost and um, that, that that I believe is our role, to be a leader in this industry. We have to accept that there's a negative impact and we have to reduce this. Um, now the question is obviously, what exactly, what concretely does it need, like what do we need to change to get there? You said materials is obviously one angle. We all know we need to talk um, about recycling. What else is there? You know, it's, it's what, we've, what we've learned uh, in, in terms of circularity, uh, so along the value-added chain of producing uh, goods, including uh, plastic uh, materials, um, none of the players in this value-added chain will change the picture alone. So we all need to come together. It starts with design thinking. So we have to, to think uh, from the very end. We need to understand what would the pr product uh, need to look like how do we dispose um, goods? So how do we have to sort it? How do we have to put this together? So we have to talk to, 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 the, to the big brands uh, and, and because that, that's the, the only way and it's important that our people uh, honestly understand that, that we, uh, we, we take this serious. It's, it's, it's that we really uh, walk the talk. And don't you think that one angle is also and actually consuming less plastics and actually rethinking where, whether, whether we need a coffee, a coffee cup in the morning, you know, how many yogurt cups we have, how many bottles we use, isn't also like drastically reducing yeah, what we consume. And it's not even like limited to 
uh, plastics, also think about electronics, think about fashion. Isn't that, as, as society, we actually need to consume less? Stefan, I, I believe that there's not just one silver bullet. I think that there's different things that we need to do in parallel. And of course, uh, we as individuals, but also as a company, we, we really need to contemplate where to use less. That, that's one way. But what we have learned over, over uh, decades, over centuries, is that innovation always is the best way forward. So the question is, what can we to do better uh, so that we, that we do things smarter? And so we create wealth on one hand for, for our employees, for their families, uh, for us as a society, and at the same time trying to reduce the impact on the environment. If we take a broader view on, on, on plastics and what we do, yeah, you will see a society that is very unhappy with the material, to put it nicely. Yeah? Some people would even say, like, a lot of people hate plastics these days yeah? because they can see the negative impacts. Yeah? You can't hide that anymore. Yeah? So you run a business doing something that people don't like. Wouldn't that actually be smarter to do something different? Also looking into like policy regulations, yeah? I see the European Union banning plastics products, yeah? So they want to actually get away from plastics packaging. Now we are doing this, wouldn't it be smarter to look into, I don't know, other products, also other materials instead of plastics? You know, I, I believe that, that, that plastics, uh, we cannot ban plastics from, from, from from the way how we live. The European so, Union did? No, just, just they did in, in, very, in very specific areas. And, and in, in some of these areas it makes sense, and in some it doesn't. But overall it's impossible to ban plastics uh, uh, from, from our planet. And it doesn't make sense to ban it, because there are very good reasons why we, we use this material. So, so I, I think what we need to do is we need to create a picture for ourselves that is, that is positive. It is important that we accept our responsibility with the negative issues. So if we want to improve our planet with plastics, uh, and there are so many ways uh, that we can uh, make this world better. So we are actively reducing carbon emissions with our products, because in the, in the process of creating them in, 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 in their lifetime, they help reducing emissions. That's, that's a positive thing. So there is no reason to hide. There is no reason to feel ashamed. Uh, because there is a reason to, to be proud of it. But of course, we need to take actions to mitigate uh, the negative impacts. But the question is, and, and let me just give you another example, how, how I personally uh, see the situation. If you compare taking the car versus walking, it's always, it's always more environmentally friendly if you, if you walk. But there are some things you only achieve if you take a car. So if you, if you can contribute in making the car uh, more environmentally friendly, then, then you're doing something positive because it is, it's unrealistic that people will only uh, uh, walk. So they will take, and it makes sense that they take vehicles. And, and if we contribute by making this better, then, then we're having a positive impact. But the car example is actually a good example because I see cities, just think about Copenhagen and other cities, they say like, don't buy a car anymore, we're gonna make public transport for free, yeah? So in the end, in those cities, you don't need a car anymore. Now, coming to us, the question is, will there be policy makers and regulations and, and uh, tighter um, rules about plastics that in 20 years, we will use dramatically less? You don't see that. Maybe, yes, and, and, and it's a good example. So there, in, 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 and there are, of course, um, situations where it makes sense to have no cars anymore. So in, in big cities where you have public transportation, where uh, distances are, are shorter, it makes a lot of sense not to involve cars anymore. 
but as, as, as soon as you need to get to the suburbs uh, or far beyond, you, you will use uh, cars or other ve vehicles. So it's, it's about the combination, and it's exactly what we do with our products. We don't say, let's put as much plastic into our world as, as much as possible. That's, that's not our approach. So our approach is, what is the smartest way to have a packaging? What is the smartest way to, to have blood drawn? Uh, what is the smartest way to have a, a mattress being produced? So that is something we need to, to uh, take care of. And, and yes, of course, we have to, and we have, we have already embarked on this journey. So, so, so where do we need to involve other materials? So, so think back to our K3 cup. That's the best example. So Griner was the inventor of the K3 cup, the, the cardboard and, and plastic combination of a yogurt cup. The idea was to create an environmental friendly packaging. You, you, can, you, you know that you have to separate, you can separate these, you, you can dispose them separately. So this is the way we need to, to, to think. It's not about as much plastic, it's about what is the, the most, uh, uh, what is the smartest way to, to do it. And if it ends up with, with other materials, so yes then, but, but we need to be the front runner. So if, if someone comes up with a solution, that then it should be, it should be us. So that's, that's the way how I see it. Excellent, we are almost at the end. And uh, before I have to let you go, I would like to throw some words at you. And I would ask you to just um, respond with whatever comes to your mind in one word. The first word is paper. Paper? Paper. A paper. Paper is, uh, is, is, is a great thing that it's, um, I would say, overestimated. Profits. Profits, it's, um, it's an important uh, re prerequisition uh, to exist uh, long term. Blue. Blue is uh, our color. Dancing. Uncapable. All right. Greta Thunberg. Great person. Last words, BMW X5. That's, uh, that's a very nice car. Is there another dimension to that car? It, it's, it's, a, it's a car which, which is parked in my garage. Um, so, of course, there's another dimension. And I was asking, I was waiting for this question all the time, uh, Stefan. Well, I delivered. Anything else we need to t say about that car? Because it obviously, there's a close relation. Let's be serious about yes, that. I mean, of course. It, I mean, it, it's not the, well, to put it nicely, like not the most sustainable car. Yes. I mean, there's yeah. like... There is no way, for, there is no need for you to be very polite in, in, in addressing this question because, you know, most of, of the uh, mileage that I spend for, for the company, I do not spend with this car. So we have a car that's a diesel with, a, I think, very uh, reasonable uh, fuel consumption that I can travel long distances with. And this is a car with which I spend most of the time uh, traveling. So. But overall, we all have to accept that there are some personal needs uh, for, for transportation and for things that you do. And, and in the end, there's also a factor which is, which is passion. I'm, I'm a petrol head and then I have passion uh, for cars. So for me, of course, the ambition, is, um, the ambition is to have a good balance. And there are so many things that I try to do. And it's the same with us as a, as a company. We cannot... Uh, be a hundred percent perfect everywhere and but our overall ambition needs to be positive and better than with others Great. excellent one very last question if you had a message to the world what would that be the message uh, there's I have learned one sentence and this is it's not about avoiding plastics it's a it's about avoiding plastics waste and, and, and plastics does have a very positive, can have a very, very positive contribution uh, to climate change and, and uh, we are part of that. Excellent. Thanks for being with me here today. I very much enjoyed My pleasure. this. My pleasure. I hope you enjoyed our conversation as well. Um, there will be more interviews, so stay tuned. In the meantime, stay healthy, stay positive and all the best. Thank you.